He captured hearts, solved mysteries, and survived one heartbreak after another. Sure, there's been remarkable teen stars before, but Sean Cassidy rewrote the manual in ways we almost never see. So, how did Sean Cassidy deal with trying to make a name for himself coming from an entertainment dynasty? And in what ways did history repeat itself for him in the most heartbreaking way? Welcome, I am your host Nostalgic Nick with these answers and much more, including how he got the nickname Cassadini. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up to show your support and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a deep dive. But without further ado, let's crack this case. How many Cassidy brothers are there? Ah, Cassidy. It's a name you've certainly heard over and over in a lot of different contexts. Hi there. David Cassidy. Butch Cassidy, of course. There's even a quirky character actor named Ted Cassidy. You know, you rang. But the Cassidy we're concentrated on today is a bit tighter knit. See, Sean has two younger brothers he's fully related to, Patrick and Ryan. But he's also got an older half-brother, who is, in fact, the famous David Cassidy from the Partridge family. So, of course, that makes Sean the son of none other than Shirley Jones, the matriarch of the Partridge clan, and Jack Cassidy, the actor, singer, and director. Just a man of many hats. Now, Sean was a bit of a mama's boy, having lived with mom Shirley for 18 years, and he was proud of their friendship, too. In a 1977 interview with People, Sean said, quote, I'm very close to my mother. She's so family-oriented, it's hard to understand why she went into show business in the first place. For a rising star like him just hitting his stride, that was a pretty solid role model to have. And Sean left no doubt about how much of an influence she had, saying, quote, I know my mother would be disappointed in me if I got to thinking I am more important than anyone else, just because of the business I'm in. But sadly, Sean learned firsthand tragedy doesn't care who's famous either. While his mom was a guiding force in his life, his time with his father was cut brutally short. In 1976, weeks before Christmas, Jack died in a horrific apartment fire. What was left of him was so badly burned he had to be identified with dental records. This was just a year after Sean watched his parents divorce, one turbulent thing after another. Now, Sean was weighed down with regrets. Since he was just coming into his own as a national star, he said, quote, there are so many things I'd like to ask him. He could really blow away people who didn't know him very well. But I never doubted his love. He was a real father. My regret is that he died before he saw me on TV or heard my album. Sean believed his dad would have been proud of him, not just because of his accomplishments, but also because of how down to earth he was determined to stay, thanks to the teachings of mom and dad, both eternally famous. But unfortunately for Sean, life in the spotlight knows how to test a person's resolve, especially when it comes to the things most personal and private. And every battle, won or lost, would be fought without his dad. How old was Sean Cassidy when he did Hardy Boys? Tonight, the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew meet Dracula. If you tuned into ABC during the late 70s, you probably solved a few mysteries with Nancy, Drew, and the Hardy Boys. You might also have had a bit of a head start if you read the Nancy Drew books, which is what the show and a bunch of other screen adaptations were based on. Though if you're a book purist, you probably noticed the big change the producers made to the characters. First and foremost, they aged everybody up. In the books, the young detectives were usually teens throughout the novels, but they had to bump the ages up a bit because Pamela Sue Martin and Parker Stevenson, the actors who played Nancy Drew and Frank Hardy, were both in their mid-twenties during production. As for Sean Cassidy, who played Joe Hardy, the book usually has Joe a bit younger and Sean was too, he was 18 pretty close to the source material. Well, what did you expect? A funeral march playing on the stereo and mourners weeping from the darkroom? And Sean was actually the first one to be cast. Producer Arlene Sedaris said that when looking to fill that role, they wanted, quote, a young David Cassidy. 
<laughs> well, you couldn't have asked for a better young David Cassidy, huh? I guess he just worked that Sean Cassidy magic. No, literally. Because before taking up acting in earnest, Sean became something of a magician who performed at kids' parties as part of Cassadini. Yep, the family's magic act. And get this, one of the people he performed to magic for was a five-year-old Jennifer Aniston. Decades later, his audience grew to include adults, but of course, it was acting on the Hardy Boys that made him a household name. The show took a bit of a unique approach to its lead cast by rotating the focus each episode. Of course, all that fame at such a formative time, it can change a person into something ugly. But the cast never had that kind of rivalry. In fact, they became fast friends. All three were buddies, but Parker even signaled out Sean as the cast member he had the closest bond to. The two enjoyed spending time hopping on the trams, giving people a tour of the studio. And when they goofed off, they made sure everyone involved enjoyed their antics. It was one thing they could agree on. As Parker said, quote, Sean and I couldn't have been more different, but we have the same sense of humor. We have a kind of bizarre, dry sense of humor, and we cracked each other up all the time. It didn't really make sense because I was a preppy Ivy League kid, and he was the heir to this entertainment family. And what's really cool is they stayed friends, and not just the kind you call every decade or so. These guys stayed in touch. In fact, in 2019, Sean was touring and Parker Stevenson made sure he was set up to watch a pre-show sneak peek. Although Sean can never re-watch himself in Hardy Boys. Where others might hate their first big gig for getting them typecast, Sean has nothing but fondness for it, saying, quote, I'm thrilled it's there for the people that love the show, and I loved the show. It was my first job, and it was a great experience. Who is Sean Cassidy's partner? We've seen it plenty of times before, and we'll probably see it a million times more. Getting famous at such a young age can send a person a one-way trip to disaster. Heck, it's done that to plenty of adults, too. So what was the damage on Sean Cassidy? What did stardom do to this teen heartthrob? Well, Sean was living the life, but he also took time to stop and look around at what was happening. His brother David had women throwing themselves at him, but there was a time in 1974 when a 14-year-old was crushed to death at one of his concerts. Memories like that affected Sean way more than the lure of endless flings. If Sean was going to form any bonds like that, they were going to be meaningful and safe for everyone. So that meant while his brother was living the teen heartthrob experience times a million, Sean took it rather slow. So what happened when he was seen hanging around getting close with a princess, Carrie Fisher? Well, absolutely nothing. They were also just good friends. Famous friends, but friends nonetheless. But Sean was careful not to leave room for any doubt, both for the tabloids and for his platonic friends. When he hung out with the girl, there were always others involved too. If he had a female friend on his arm, it was just someone's sister. And there were always people around. Nobody was his single date. None of that. This might be because Sean was very career oriented. At just 18, he shared, quote, I had a girlfriend once, but I had no time for the relationship. When I find the right person, I'll make time for her. Turns out the right person was a few people over the years. First, it was Anne Pennington, a model and former Playboy playmate. The two spent a dozen years together before divorcing, but they did get some good stuff out of the doomed relationship. And since 2004, he's been married to producer Tracy Lynn Turner, and they're still together. After coming from such a big Hollywood family, Sean went on to build one of his own. But how did he balance his stardom with parenting after losing the ones so important to him? How many children does Sean Cassidy have? There is something Sean Cassidy calls, quote, the most important thing in my life. Is it his fame that has set him up for life? 
Nope, quite the opposite to hear him tell it. He once said in an Oprah interview, quote, The idea of being any kind of an idol is kind of embarrassing. My self-worth was never rooted in that. What it's rooted in is his children, all seven of them. He became a dad to daughter Caitlin and son Jake, along with stepdaughter Jessica, from his first marriage to Anne. And then he and Tracy had four kids of their own, Caleb, Roan, Lila, and Marin. While Sean puts a big crowbar of distance between his childhood fame and his fatherhood, he's pretty sure his kids have seen a few episodes of Hardy Boys, quote, much to their horror. I'm not sure I want to know what's going on. These days, they are his focus, but Sean enjoys balancing family life with a much calmer but still fulfilling career. He's not in front of the camera too much, but has worked behind the lens for shows like Blue Bloods and Cold Case. His last TV writing and producing credit was for episodes of the medical drama New Amsterdam. Family's always been very important to Sean, and his relationship with his brother was a complicated one to say the least. We've got a full rundown on David if you want to check that one out next, but watching a loved one self-destruct is not easy. And when news of David's alcoholism broke after his death, Sean was candid about how messy the emotions were. He said, quote, I've seen it in every family. It's so painful and nobody really has the right rule book on how to manage it. Just like his dad's gruesome death, David's passing in 2017 left Sean with more regrets. But luckily he did have memories to look back on, like pillow fights they used to have. And he shared a candid story about their playing, saying, quote, I tried to catch him, of course. I always tried to catch him, but I never could. Now I will carry him. Along with all of the funny, sad, extraordinary days we shared, none more filled with love than these last few at his side. Sean carries on the limelight, happy with a slower pace though. Much to his own surprise, he's also back to performing on stage. In the summer of 2023, he put together a five-night show called The Magic of a Midnight Sky. It was an intimate look at his life growing up among entertainment royalty. He called it, quote, a survival story, and it's really fun and it's funny. Surprisingly funny, I think. And it's sexy, and it's romantic, and it's emotional, and it's revealing. It's something Sean never expected to do ever again. Sean Cassidy, as self-aware as they come. He once said, quote, I have a weird career. I had a very explosive first act, and then at 21 went into hiding. Yeah, it's a weird path, but he always knew to hide from the pitfalls of stardom pitfalls that dogged his entire family, but most importantly, his eternally famous brother. All right, that's enough of me. Now we need to hear from you. What was your favorite project Sean Cassidy worked on? Did you enjoy watching the Nancy Drew Hardy Boy show? Did you enjoy Sean Cassidy's music? Or were you more of a fan of David? Get in the comments and tell us all things Sean Cassidy and all things the Cassidy clan. If you enjoyed our deep dive today, please click that thumbs up icon to show your support. It really helps. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't get left behind. But most importantly, from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you very much for watching.